And coming back to another thing that, uh, Rector, you said uh, rightly, Italy is waking up to Pakistan. And I can announce uh, what is already known to Ibrahim Qureshi, to you yourself, sir, that we will be having, from the 5th to the 7th of December, the biggest ever business delegation that has come to Southeast Asia outside of China, with about 80 businessmen who will come to Islamabad and have a one-day stop in Lahore to meet the business community. I will, however, not recommend a, an Italian consul, permanent consul here, because if I do have one, then it will have a lot less excuses to come to Lahore, which is a breath of fresh air, living in Islamabad, which is a wonderful place, but uh, not, not half as lively. Now, coming to the substance of the conference, a lot has been said, and uh, I do believe that this kind of initiatives is essential in the moment we're living, because Pakistan is on, uh, in a watershed moment. It's in a cusp of a make or break moment. I'm absolutely sure that from here to 10 years, if the right decisions are taken, and they will be taken, Pakistan will be one of the leading countries in the world. This is not a leap of faith. And I, I say a lot I believe. I mean, I don't believe a lot of things. Uh, I do have a few firm beliefs in Pakistan, one of which is that you underestimate your own potential. And by doing so, not a criticism, maybe it is, you lead the world to underestimate your potential. Pakistan is the sixth world uh, country for population. It's got a middle class of 50 million people, the size of France. It is in a geographical position, let alone a strategic position, which I will come to back later. It has a growth of 4 to 7 percent. Being an Italian, I have a very healthy mistrust for official, for official statistics. But your growth is certainly larger. I mean, any European country, including Germany, would uh, envy, does envy, your growth potential and your growth rates. And another issue is that in the world there are 11 countries which are, have over 200 million inhabitants, 100 million inhabitants. And those are divided more or less one per continent. Brazil and South America, Mexico, the US, Russia, Nigeria, and that makes five. The other six are all around here. Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, China, you know the rest. In manufacturing, and we are all in Europe, we are all manufacturing in in industries except the UK. We are all in, in, in sorry, manufacturing countries. Margins are 8 to 13, 14 percent. So you make money on the quantity, not on anything else. So you go to markets, which are big markets, because you have low margins. 30 percent, 40 percent margins, you find them only in the defense industry. In mature industries, and they are all mature industries, even the aerospace industry and mature industries, you have that kind of margins. So you come to big markets. That is why S&P and Moody's have upgraded your ratings. That is why Renault is looking, I hope that Fiat will be looking soon to come here. That's why 80 Italian companies are coming here, because you have the potential of becoming a hub of a region of 3.2 million inhabitants. 
So, as I say, it is not a leap of faith. And Pakistan has a lot more going for it. Whatever you may think, think of the government, I think highly of any government which is in power, especially mine. Pakistan has some of the most investor-friendly policies in the Southeast. Your neighbors do not compare to you. Any of your neighbors do not compare to you. Pakistan has a serious leadership. Pakistan is a stable country. Then, as I say, whatever you think of the government, it is a stable country. It has a sound industrial base for which, in some cases, it's obsolete. In some cases, it's not. It has a big internal market, and it has a class of, a world-class level of entrepreneurship. The ones I meet are absolutely serious. I've had two of the many examples. Mapei, which you may never have heard of, is a, an Italian, the biggest company in the world, it's an Italian company, for industrial uh, chemicals and for, uh, how do you say this in English? Let's say construction materials. It works, it has plants in 69 countries, 68. I invited the CEO of Mapei here. He came, and he came back proposing, well, Pakistan, isn't that the terrorist country? Isn't it full of terrorists? Am I gonna get shot as soon as I get off the airplane? Am I gonna find a bomb in the hotel? That's a kind of, well, you know it better than I do. That's the kind of first impression you get when, when you read the papers, even your papers. He came, he stayed a couple of days, came back after a month, and will be investing 20 million euros next year to build a plant here. The, the second example is Fiocchi. It's a, it makes uh, bullets for hunting and for military, but especially for hunting. 80% of their, of their, it makes from five, um, makes the whole range from 5.7 to 12.7. So it makes all the hunting range. Mr. Fiocchi himself, which was a close friend of mine, I invited him here. He came to Pakistan on a Monday. On a Tuesday, he had already signed a memorandum. This was in July. And they are planning in small 8 million euro investment in POF to delocalize to Pakistan. I'm sure that this speaks volumes about what kind of an ambiance you have here. There are, of course, issues which the government has to address and is addressing. Energy. I think the entrepreneurs among you and even the people who you know, have to program their dinners according to the, load, to the load shedding know exactly what I'm talking about, although things are getting better. I live in a diplomatic enclave in Islamabad in which the, one of the few advantages is that you have boars all over the place, and, but you don't have load shedding. So I'll take the boars and keep, and keep the electricity. And for the foreign direct investment, which is what I'm interested in, not having Italians come here, sell their goods, and go away. That's not how you build a partnership. You need to delocalize, especially in a country like this, in which you have the advantage of through Pakistan, which is, as I tell my people, a superpower both politically and economically in the Islamic world. So, and this is something to be taken care, taken into account because, as they say, trade follows a flag, as they, the Brits used to say, and they were right. And trade follows influence, and you have a lot of influence in the Islamic world. So, to speak very clearly, to establish oneself in Pakistan and have a good Pakistani partner gives you access to a lot of other markets. Also, the fact that your growth rate, whatever the reality is, will make sure that your internal market can absorb, absorb a lot of investment and production for the, next, for the coming years. So before looking abroad, you can look here. So it's a win-win situation. You have a base in a 
expanding market with the advantage of not having a limit to your investment because once you have saturated the market, the internal market, you can look at exports through the influence Pakistan has abroad. There are, and here I'm talking to the entrepreneurs, a few issues that should be raised. One, we were talking about this with Ibrahim, is protectionism. I do understand that when you have a budding economy and what you perceive as a weak economy, you tend to protect it, your industry. And I can relate to that perfectly because Italy is now one of the G8 countries. Last year, our export, the last year was the worst, that no, wasn't last year, it was 2015, it was last year, yes. Was the worst year on record for us. We exported 512 billion euros of stuff. I think that's twice the GDP of Pakistan. And that was our worst year. But 50 years ago, we were exactly like you. I remember, I was telling my wife, coming here, that uh, I was 10, I'm now 60, that was 50 years ago. I landed in one of, the, one of the big airports in the south of Italy in 19, it was 50 years ago, so you do the math. I mean, you're only listening, I'm doing a lot of work here, so at least do the math. And uh, our luggage was taken from the plane from, with a donkey cart. And now we are the fifth industrial power in the world. So it can be done. It can be done. We are, we are exactly like you with the system of you know, values and family and, 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 and villages. And you go to the south of Italy, they hate the north. The north hates the south. Uh, I'm an exception because I'm from the south and my wife is from the north. And so I am an exception to that. But it's the same thing, you know, sinned with the Balochi and with the Pashtuns, or you go with the Milanese and the Romans and the Napolitans. It's exactly the same issue. We have had a big advantage that we were in a less difficult neighborhood than you were, and our neighbors were a bit better than yours. But I say that off the record. Uh, Although our neighbors are the French, I hope there are no French here, and so on. I didn't hear that. Well, I was on protectionism. We tried that protection. That was probably the only government policy that backfired. Protectionism, protectionism is always a bad idea, because if you have to protect something, it means it's weak. If it weaks, it's obsolete. So, what you're doing is you're growing a weak industry. You're growing an outdated industry. You're growing an industry for which there is no demand. So if you want to become a, oh, you already are actually, a capitalist economy. But if you want to become an advanced capitalist economy, there is no place, unfortunately, for obsolete companies. And sooner or later, you pay the price. Look at what happened to Russians. Look what happened to Japanese. The protectionist policies in Japan, I hope there are no Japanese who get offended. Japan has 30 years of stagflation. Why is that? Because the protectionism in, the administrative protectionism in Japan does not allow for competition. And so the Koreans, the Vietnamese, the Malaysians are all going forward. The Japanese, the Japanese are at a level of excellence, but they're not advancing. And I will apologize tomorrow to the Japanese ambassador for having said that, but he knows it better than I do. So, I think that's the only message that I really wanted to give the industrialists. Don't go protectionist because it's against your own interest. On that, I would leave you to, on the, the, I mean, the very positive note, which I hope will become 
the truth. I have staked my own career on the growth of Pakistan, so do it for me. Grow and become rich. Thank you.